bird. <laughs> <laughs> then what is this thing? Gio should never play for U.S. men's national team again because of the action of his parents. Because what an idiot! Oh, what type of Muppet does this? Muppets. Absolute Muppets. I, I'm not going to be the best person to give a whole explanation here, but that's... Booty, booty, sick, sick. Booty, booty. Fucking deal with it. What are we really doing? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I can agree with that. There are a zebra in between a tarantula and an elephant. Has been nothing more than a sham. So yeah, we didn't play well, but you know what? At the end of the day... Got the job done. It's gonna be a good time for sure. Oh, sex with the first cousin would indeed be incest. And All right, welcome to the straight red card. I'm flying solo tonight. There's nothing wrong with a little um, auto filleting on occasion. Yeah, so even. Got the start right, as you noticed on this show. Started it on time. You can actually see me, hear me. I'm not a complete moron. Um, sometimes bordering run out with technology. But I guess the case being um, the show's on, right? Got it going. Uh, let me see if I already missed uh, the turd in the background. I did. We got we to gotta have the turd. Um Turd says, uh, turn the background says, welcome back to the straight red card. Starring just Derek. Brad is still just busy getting a breast reduction. While Derek starts the show on time. Will he start the show on time? Hopefully. My wife blew my pot dealer. Well, if you're out of money, buddy, <clears throat> there's really not a whole lot of choices unless he wants you to blow, right? Now that's a problem. Uh, I will keep my eye on the chat as best I can. That's another reason I didn't ask a guest on, because it would be a disservice to the guest, really. I wouldn't be able, it wouldn't, I would not personally be able to listen to the guest, watch the chat, make sure the super chats got posted, um, and then also do the slides. What? What am I, an octopus? I can't do all those things. I don't know how Brett does it. I don't know. I mean, I, I guess there are parts of the show he just shuts me off and doesn't listen to anything I have to say so he can get to the next slide. But uh, anyhow, here I am. Welcome to the show, a show where we congratulate everybody who is able to maintain their foreskin. Now, as a circumcised male, I didn't know there were a whole lot of benefits, but um, our Filipino friend informed us that, in fact, um, there are. And I guess one of them is you can just, I don't even need the loop. You can just whack it wherever. But I'm just thinking, seems to me um, there would still be chafing. After a while, there would be chafing. But then there's chafing between the skin and the shaft. I don't know. I haven't thought about it enough. I'll have to, uh, I'll have to consider more. Brett, by the way, is not getting a breast reduction. He's very happy with his moves. And, um, you know, you got to appreciate that. Any man that can appreciate his moves. Um, I certainly appreciate mine. Mine are a little smaller these days because I've lost about, I don't know, 12 pounds. Um, I hope to keep that going. Would like to lose another 10, maybe 15. Brett is still in Florida where he's on vacation. Uh, with EB and it, he, they're at a pegging convention. I don't know what goes on there, but um, pegging would be my guess. I don't know. All right. We already have a super chat and it is Jose Reyes. Thank you, Jose. Really do appreciate the support, support as I fly without a jock strap tonight. I'm not saying Brett's a jock strap, but he is a support system, right? And he does come with his own um, his own point of view on a new number of things, um, like using a possession player to close out a game. Uh, like, say, some people were suggesting, well, we'll get to that. I think I've, I have a slide on that. Jose Reyes says for $5, thanks for going solo today. No jokes today. You got this today. No jokes today. I think they're probably going to be jokes anyhow. Um, for players to jump up, Vickers, Haji, Sergeant, 
and the rest are unknown for me. I would agree with all of those as possibilities. Um, I think that's probably, um, I think it's pretty solid to say that there's already a lot of interest um, in Sargent. I haven't heard as much about Haji, but I did hear a couple rumors, not as many as Sargent. Um, and Cameron Carter Vickers is somebody that needs to go. Uh, he needs to seek it. I don't think he's sought it. Uh, I don't think he's actively out, out there asking his agent, get me out of Celtic, please. Um, so anyhow, that's something to consider. All right, what is this? My stepsister likes me, but but I don't. What do I do? You should like yourself, Sakitos. Sakitos, I see what you're doing there. Um, yeah, you need to like yourself first, or maybe you don't. I mean, you're more likely to engage with your stepsister if you don't, probably, if you have low self-esteem and you have no other contacts with any females out there and she likes you, I guess, at least you got an opportunity there. I hate to rationalize that for you, but, uh, I think you need to start to like yourself. I think that's the first step. Um, let's see if we got any other good ones here. Um. Napoli are stalking Jesus Ferreira. That's quite funny. I like everyone's sense of humor here. Um, that's not uh, in the least bit true. We did get this post from Yanks Abroad. Um, fun fact of the day, Gio Reyna, also widely known as the American Modric. I've never heard anybody say that. Has anybody heard that? The American Modric? I mean, he's much taller than Modric. Modric's practically a hobbit compared to Reina. So Reina's like six foot one. Um, has played only 81 minutes in five Premier League matches. I mean, it's kind of uh, kind of beating a dead horse there, but to compare him to Freddie Adu is a total joke. I guess that's the point. Your point is to annoy, but you used to be a lot better at it. Or maybe you were always this bad and I didn't notice, but your jokes are getting worse. And I don't even know who this guy on the left is. He looks familiar. Was that the Arsenal kid? I can't remember. Um, all right. Let's see what else we got. Let's bump to let's bump to soccer dad. Soccer dad. Um, anyhow, I don't know if I covered this last time, but quite honestly, there's some really good bands in the third stage or the Sunday. Uh, not Soul Asylum necessarily. Oh, I can hide current comments. We're going to take this show slow and low. That is the tempo. Let it go. Let yourself go. Slow and low. That is the tempo. We're going to go slow tonight so I don't get anything up. Um, you got Liz Fair. You got Dinosaur Jr. Guided by Voices. My former label mates are still playing. How? That dude's 10 years older than me. How's he still doing it? I don't know. Um, then you got Juliana Hatfield, who I have been in many a studio with. Um, I wasn't one of the musicians. I was just there helping out in the studio. But because, um, you know, I'm not a great musician. I'm a good writer. Um, I can play everything, but I can't play anything really, really good. Um, you got the Lemonheads. I think I have told the story about how one of my best friends died of um, a heroin overdose. And there was, a, in relation to the lemon heads, we were not very happy about that at the time. Uh, I'm not going to go back into that. Anyhow, there's some good bands on this particular stage. And if I went down further, I think I saw Built to Spill on here. I mean, Built to Spill is actually probably the best band at, on this list. On the list. So Bob Pollard, yes, old Bob Pollard. Bob is, um, I don't think I've ever talked to Bob Pollard or been at a show with him where he's been sober. And that's just a fact. Um, and that shouldn't be surprising because those guys go through like three, four cases of beer on stage every night they would go through that. And we would just be like, wow. I mean, that's a lot of calories. 
that's a lot of in calories, man. I'm surprised you're not as big as a house. But, I mean, he wasn't. And I guess he stayed in pretty good health. Obviously, he's playing Coachella. All right. All right. Just wanted to bring that up. Um, some good bands that are were on, in fact, that list. Brace for Jizz Horn Camp. Thank you for sending me this. I can't remember who did, but I do appreciate whoever sent this to me. Uh, it would be funnier if Jizz's name was Jizz Hornblower. If his last name were Hornblower, that would be an awesome. I would, I would die laughing. I'd probably piss in my pants if his name was Jizz Hornblower. That if that doesn't say autofolate or bukkake, I don't know what does. I don't know if in his country, um, which is the Netherlands, it looks like that jizz doesn't have the same meaning, or because of the red light districts in Amsterdam or whatever, they're just okay with jizz in general, like just jizz, or man, that's the jizz. Or you're the jizz, man. I don't know. That could be a saying there. Or maybe that's just what his parents called him. Or maybe that's really his la his first name and not a nickname. Whatever it is, kind of ballsy on his part. Somebody sent me an email that I kind of copy copied and pasted into a slide. Um, uh, one of my sons is texting me right in the middle of the show. He knows I'm doing this show right now. Don't text me right now. Not in the middle of the show. Not when I'm talking about jizz. Ugh. All right. Um, and somebody sent me an email. So I cut and paste their list. And they asked me to pick one of these. One or the other. Rolling Stones versus the Beatles. Very, very difficult. Um, I mean, I love the dark side of the Rolling Stones. I like painted black. I like so much Rolling Stones. Love it. But I'm going to have to go with the overall. Um... The overall catalog, probably the Beatles. And then especially if you add on extra solo Beatles stuff, um, let's say Double Fantasy by Lennon, All Things Must Pass by George Harrison, and um, Band on the Run, which is a fucking classic by Paul McCartney. Um, but I, I, I don't like picking between these two because they're both two of one of my favorite bands ever. So it's not really a fair question, I don't think. Hip hop versus rap is very easy to me. Hip hop, Tribe Quest, Black Sheep, De La Soul, Public Enemy. Obviously, I was living in New York at the time. Uh, then I lived in Carl, Pennsylvania, right near Philadelphia. I was into hip hop, I was not into rap. Um, I didn't get into that until much later. Steps versus first cousin. We have been pretty clear about here. First cousins are a no-no unless you want a Habsburg baby. All right. So no on the first cousins. Stepsister, well, uh, make sure you're both consenting, right? Um, Lucky Charms versus Cocoa Puffs. <sighs> Cocoa Puffs. Yeah, I like chocolate better. Um, KY versus Vaseline, that's well known on this show. I don't know why you asked that. Obviously, Vaseline, even though KY sponsored, we have obviously talked about Vaseline being um, the better tool for the job. I think KY runs out too quickly. And it depends on what the job is, too, as well. You shouldn't need either, necessarily, having a partner-to-partner -partner relationship unless you are exploring a different different cave um and then we got pele versus maradona <sighs> that's another really hard one man i i i'm having a really hard time with this listen i grew up with you know watching pele at the cosmos as a kid so of course my affections are there but then i watch maradona play in the world cup and what he did to england and his whole career Probably outside of the fact that he did too many drugs. Maybe that makes it even more astounding, his career. As an overall player, I'm calling that a draw. I'm sorry, I'm a sellout. I am. Messi, Ronaldo's easy for me. Messi all the way. 
Foreskin versus circumcision. So this is somebody who's obviously been watching the most recent show. Foreskin versus circumcision. I already said whatever works for you. You don't get to pick anyhow. You get to have what you have. They do that when you're born. Um, Bruce Arena versus Bob, Bob Bradley. Man. Well, I'm just going to say Bruce got us the furthest. Bruce today isn't the same Bruce then, and the second run with Bruce sucked. But you just got to give the guy credit for getting us further in the World Cup than anybody else. But I, I really do respect Bob Bradley and what he did in the Confeds Cup and generally just the way he approaches the game. That's a really unfair question. Ow. Um, Freddie Adu versus Sebastian Soto. Now, Sebastian's still playing. Um, you know, he's still a clock and fur, but he never had the same hype that Freddie Adu had. Never had the same hype. And then Alexi versus Ma Mossy. I'll take Mossy every day of the week. Every day of the week. Let me see what somebody said here. We got uh, Pele for the fact he had the balls to play here in the U.S. of A. Yeah, I don't know if it was balls. He got offered um, a boatload of Disney money to come and play for the Cosmos, if I remember correctly. So did Beckenbauer. I mean, the players on that team were an all-star team, and they traveled the world on the offseason and made money. Um, so pretty awesome. All right. Let me get rid of some of these, um, some of these slides. All right. Let me remove them from studio. So this is where I'm so slick and sly and, uh, yeah, right, Derek. All right. So slides, let's find, um, this. Okay. We'll start this. We'll start with this. We'll start with this. <clears throat> Well, hold on. Another one from on, uh, Ontario Banderas. Who, by the way, that's that's an acting name. We've said that many times here. Um, now, if you actually look like Squidward, probably not. But that is a sexy name. Starring Antonio Banderas. I mean, I think you could go far with that. I'm team foreskin, but jealous of circumcised peeps because life is easier for them. Why is that? Because you have to clean it more? Or what's, what's the deal about that, Antonio? Hmm. I'm not sure what that is. What the hell, Brett? I thought you were getting pegged tonight. <laughs> oh. Shot a 43 on 18 tonight? No, you didn't. There was no way you could shoot a 43 in 18 holes. Unless you were playing putt-putt? Were you playing putt-putt? That has to be it. Um. All right, what else we got here? Um, having made time to watch both of them, I'd say Pele was a better footballer. Felt like D10s occasionally went missing in games and over dribble. So yeah, Maradona could over dribble, but that was kind of like the fun of watching him, right? Um, is that really Brett? Oh, it is really Brett. It was putt putt. <laughs> I figured it was putt putt because you haven't played golf in years, like real golf, like 18 holes, whatever. There's just no, no way. Uh, Juan says clean your foreskin any hard people. It might be easier if it were hard. I don't know. Let us know. Let us know. All right. We got another super chat. Jose Reyes. Thank you again, brother. We love you for $2. Just clean your peen regardless. That's the answer. So I guess this is about hygiene then. And that's, that was one of the reasons the army, the U.S. military, if you were born on a military base like mine, it was just mandatory stuff. That's just what happened. You, like, had to check a box to say no if you were, like, a Catholic family or whatever in order for it not to happen. You know what I mean? So um, I've never known. I never found it hard to keep 
my man marbles and my genitalia clean. Um, I mean, I went, went camping once for three days. <sighs> That's like one of the reasons I hate camping. Like, ew. And that goes for men and women. Like, we all need to shower. And when I say I went camping, I went camping out in the woods. Like, if I wanted to take a bath, I had to go, like, take a swim in a stream. No, it was, the stream was too small for a swim. You would have to lay on the rocks, the bed of rocks in the stream, with your man marbles on the rocks, and then wash your shit, right? That's gross. That's just, that's why I hate camping. Don't want to go camping ever again. Okay. Um, this says, you may call this a golden generation. This is takes. But there still isn't a single world-class player to ever put on a U.S. men's national team jersey where he, at or will, he ever come at all. And United States Men Trev says, so to me, this actually argues against the whole golden generation label. I don't think so. Golden generations typically have the world-class numbers and then a crazy drop-off. That's not always true. Golden generation could just mean the best generation you've ever had. Or the other meaning would be it's the generation that's capable of winning World Cup. That's really subjective. To me, this is uh, the first team with players playing at this high of a level in the top five leagues we've ever had. So to me, it's kind of a golden generation. Um, are any of them world-class? Now, again, that's a term like world-class. Like those players are rare. We talked about a couple of them. Pele, Maradona, um, you know, Ronaldo, Messi. How many of those kind of players exist? Not a whole lot. Is Harry Kane world-class? I'd say he's probably close to the best player outside of Bellingham. Is Bellingham world-class? See, I would be, I would say Bellingham's world-class, and I'd say Kane is world-class. But outside of that, I think there are a lot of superb players like Foden, etc. I don't know if I would call them world-class yet. But that's why I'm saying the, the terminology world-class is subjective. You'd have to sit down for me um, and um, you would have to say, here are the bullet points that require you are required to pass to be world-class, right? Um, and then I'd be able to say, with these bullet points, I can then put players into those categories, right? Because Chuck Chuck says, I think Donovan was world-class. He had multiple goals at different World Cups in important moments, 57 assists, leader still for assists in the world. In my mind, was Landon Donovan world-class? No, because I guess my personal definition of world-class is the Messi's, is the Ronaldo's, is the Pele's, is the Maradona's. And to me, those players are one in a gazillion. Um, you know, the old Ronaldo, um, Ronaldinho. I think all those players reached the world-class level, at least for a little while. They stay world-class. That's the other thing. So I don't know if we, I like to even use the world world, the, the terminology anymore. Um, because I just think, you know, rate the players from one to ten. How many sevens do we have on the team? Is it enough sevens out of tens to compete for a World Cup? Because your team to win a World Cup doesn't have to be full of tens because that's impossible. You might have a team full of tens, nines, eights, and some sevens, but nobody's team is just full of tens. That that just doesn't happen. Um, Let me see. Brad again. Basically, Derek doesn't water down the term world class. He likes it straight. I like a lot of things straight. Um, 
Yeah, I just need some bullet points. I think we all do because this discussion goes on and it's endless and it's annoying and it doesn't make any sense. And um, after a while, just asking yourself, what, what are we really talking about here? What are we really talking about? What does that mean to you? Because some people are like world class is Landon Donovan. Other people are like world class is just like the best of the best. Johan Cruyff, Maradona, back, um, uh, Franz Beckenbauer, Pele. Those are world class, right? Um, for sure, I guess. I mean, if they're at the top of the top of the top. But those players are, they don't just come around. You know, they're not a dime a dozen. Hell, there are, I don't know, are there any world-class players on Man United right now? Any? Based on your own standards. All right. Um, players in Europe that I predict will make moves into the top five leagues this summer. Well, let's go over Trev's list. Let's go over this list. Um, Mark McKenzie. A lot of talk. A lot of talk. A top five league, I don't know. Smelled a little bit more like championship based on but they're rumors. They're rumors. I haven't seen anybody salivating for Mark McKenzie out there. Right? I haven't seen that. Tanner Tessman. Well, if the Nazi gets promoted, they'll be playing in a top five league. It's simple as that. So will Busio. And then we'll really get to see Tanner Tessman get tested. Tanner Tessman get tested. His testes get tested. We'll see it. We'll see how he handles it. If Finanzi do not get promoted, there's been a lot of talk that there are a bunch of mid-table to lower table teams in Syria who want Tanner Tessman. Haven't heard that about Busio. No offense to him. He's had some good games. But Tanner Tessman has been the consistent, consistent player, right, for that team all season. Fumar, hello, Fumar. Uh, Tessman was already in Syria. Yes, he was. That didn't work out so well, did it, for anybody on Venezia. <laughs> that was a shit show. Um, and that's unfortunate. I'm trying to figure out why that disappears. The uh, remove from the screen thing like it just disappeared so i'm just gonna leave fumar up um josh Sargent, yes lots of rumors there plenty of people talking about it uh lots of fans talking about it with the sort of like mid to low tape lower table teams that aren't likely to get relegated um norwich probably aren't going to make it it doesn't look likely that they're going to get promoted they got to fight their way and make sure they get into the promotion playoffs. And even if that happens, obviously, oh, there it is. See, it just pops up. Hide current comment. What the fuck is that? Why does it just, just disappear and come back? Um, let's see. Testament barely played until the second half of the season. That's true, too, Brett. Good point. That's why uh, you're on the show, usually. That's a good point. Um so we'll see what happens there. But um, Malik Tillman, from all I've heard, from all I've heard, PSV have no plans but to keep Malik Tillman for next season. That's their plan. And unless something spectacular comes along, their plan is to sign him and keep him. If not, he goes back to, from from whence where he came, and he'll get loaned out again. I doubt they're going to get um, a better offer for Tillman than from PSV. I bet you that's going to be the best offer they get. That would be my guess. I think PSV is ready to put all their 
money in one bag, essentially. But um, I think another season, even at PSV, wouldn't be that bad for Malik Tillman. And then PSV could, you know, sell him, and then Bayern could still get percentage for all prior and later on sell-ons. So, um, you know, we'll see what happens there. Griffin Yows, no. I know he just scored a goal at the Olympics. But really, you busted out the lube and then typed in Griffin Yow to this, to this, this X, this Twitter, this tweet. That's uh, pretty absurd, my friend. I don't know why people are so excited about Griffin Yow. Maybe because his last name rhymes with wow? Because uh, I... All right, if you've watched the three or four Westerlo games that have been available on ESPN Plus this season, he's had good moments. But it's not like he's rocking the Belgian League back to the Stone Age. He's he's having a rough time there on certain a lot of games. So is Brian Reynolds, by the way. So I think that if you're if you're coming out with Griffin Yao, you you are premature. Uh, pre predicting dictating. I think you're getting a little too excited too fast. Okay. Next slide. Yeah, so I'm so ancient. I had to create all these um, these slides, right? Because I don't... Anyhow. Uh, let's see. What else we got here? Um, slides. Pick. U.S. Soccer. Uh, there we go. Add to stage. Okay. Let's check the comments here real quick. I don't rate Griffith Yaus as, uh, Winnicleay, uh, Gonzalez. I agree. Um, the guys need to dominate their league before getting a sniff. Dominate like CCV in Scotland. Whatever happened to Winder? Injuries is what I hear. That's what was explained to me um, behind the scenes. Um, Brian and Mark, I'm mostly here to watch Derek get frustrated with him, with his computer. Yeah, I really won't be my computer I'm frustrated with. It will be my, my own self, my inability to figure out how to use certain things on um, StreamYard. That's what will irritate me more than anything else. Um, like this whole, so Brett doesn't use slides. He uses all the tabs and he shares screen. And I made a bunch of slides. So I'm learning a lesson here. Don't use slides. Don't use slides. Um, they're a pain in the ass. They truly are. Uh, what do we got here? Guest on the list. Uh, yes. Guest would be on the list of somebody who would be going somewhere else. Um, now that Javi is leaving Barcelona, we will we shall see if he stays there. Uh, by the way, I love you too, Brian. Um, yeah, we'll see. We shall see um, how that works out for him because he really didn't want to go back there if Javi was still there. He said that publicly. But now that at Barcelona are totally sucking balls, maybe Javi stays. And then he goes out alone again, unfortunately. I think, frankly, um, I think he should go play in the Bundesliga. I really do. I think there are some teams in the top four or five teams there that he would flourish at. Absolutely flourish, Dest. But, you know, he and his agent got to gotta work that out. You know, they really do. I missed another one up there. Uh, let me see if I can go back up. Uh Justin Che, yeah. Yeah, that's not working out. That's not working out. He is playing at Adeo, uh, second division, Holland. So, I mean, there's a chance he could go play for a better Dutch team, you would think, in the first division based on his own, um, his prospects and his ceiling, Right. You would think, you would think, but maybe not, maybe not. 
Derek, you're doing a great job. I always wonder how a solo TSRT show would go uh, with just you. Oh, well, it's, I appreciate that. Um, this is how it goes, I guess. I mean, we spent the last 50 minutes of the last show talking about circumcision um, and foreskin. But other than that, yeah. I mean, it's been... It's been Listen, the, the interview with Pete was not my best. I'll just put it that way last show. I was having a really hard time doing the slides, talking to Pete, and doing the chat. Like, I was befuddled, just completely lost. So, it hasn't all been um, firecrackers and anal sex, all right? It just hasn't been. Um, Max Dietz, yes. Um, another player. A lot of German Bundesliga teams are looking at as the hottest center back in uh, Bundesliga 2. Um, he's been very good for us with the youth teams, and now I need to sit. Hold on. Taking a break. Oh, time to make a drink. What is everybody drinking out there tonight? <clears throat> Maybe you're not drinking at all. Maybe you and Jenny Kush are hanging out. And uh, you're taking her deep into your lungs. Your lungs, not your throat. I guess it kind of has to go through your throat or air, throat area to get to your lungs, right? But it is your windpipe, so that is a little bit different. All right, let's see if I were any players I missed here. I saw the Pepe's agent thing. Um, I thought the agent did okay. I didn't think he threw Pepe under the bus. I think the message, and I wish I could bring it up, was very clearly that obviously any players not getting enough time is going to be frustrated. But he did say it needed to change because Pepe's got some big we got Copa America coming up. We got things coming up, and Pepe needs to play more than 10% of the minutes. Right? 10% of the minutes. Brett says, ouch. Thank you, Al, by the way. Um, I think there was a little throwing it under the bus, but not, you know, not horrible. I, I don't, I don't think that, I know that they will look, PSP will look at that comment and go, that's an agent being an agent is what I'm saying. That's what agents do. They're not going to put that on Peppy. Because agents say that shit all the time. And they realize that Pepe should be playing more. Out Raymond see all about me. He they wonder what the just me show would look like. I get it, Brett. Yeah, I guess I don't I didn't find that to be as hurtful as you did. I think maybe he's just a glutton for punishment, really, more than anything. Um, you know, and then here you go, just to prove it. Broken furnace recording says we love you, Brett. See, there's love out there, man. There's love. Um, <laughs> if you interviewed Pete and no one saw at least the first 10 minutes, did you really interview Pete? Yeah, the whole first 10 minutes. Pete was on for an hour, 10 minutes of which, or he's actually on for an hour and 15 minutes. Uh, the first 12 or 15 minutes were just completely missing from the show. Because like an idiot, um, yeah, I forgot to hit start show, start show. All right. This says between now, oh, and any other players out there? Um, let me see any other people named some players, Derek, do you prefer to get, promo uh, do you prefer to get promoted between West Brom, DK, Coventry City, Haji Wright or Norwich City, Josh Sargent? Well, here's the tough thing for Derek DK. This is now his fourth, third serious, but fourth total injury in the span of four seasons, four years. He's already, I guess, being discussed like this could be really bad and he's got to start all over again. I am not, I am wishing Daryl DK the best because he seems like a charming gentleman. But I'm finding it very hard at this point to see him as being any more likely to have a great career from here on out 
unless technology and medicine save him because they couldn't save Josh Gott and his spaghetti AC, um, ACLs and MCLs. Literally had spaghetti, spaghetti, cooked spaghetti. And uh, yeah, I just, I couldn't feel any worse for a great guy who looks to be like a fun dude to be around and a great character. Um, on the roll that Coventry City are on, I don't think Norwich have much of a shot, honestly, making, uh, getting promoted. I think they're close, but it's going to be no cigar. Could be the same for Coventry, honestly. So I guess I don't have a, I don't have a preference. I, if I had a preference, it would be Coventry City or Norwich because that, those are two players, Josh Sargent and Haji Wright, who are going to play. And Daryl DK could be out for a long in time. A long time. Let me see if I missed anybody. Mm, Mar Randall said something about his own urine. Um, let's see. I guess he's drinking his own urine. I don't know if that's healthy. Um, let me see what happened to Pepe's agent. Nothing happened to him. He just made a comment to the press about Pepe not being happy. He's only getting 10 minutes a game. Uh, am I into Cage the Elephant? I do like Cage the Elephant. I do. And that's, you know, that's good that there are bands like that still existing. Because there, there were tons of these kind of bands in the late 90s and early 2000s. Tons of them. Amazing. Hundreds of amazing bands back then. Doing what you called independent rock, which is in short called indie rock, which is what I do. So hopefully um, I did get this call from, I can't really mention who right now. But they're thinking about putting together a uh, project. Um, it's an indie film that will be about me and my band. And it will be called something like The Best Indie Rock Band of the 2000s You Maybe Never Heard or something like that. I don't know. I hope it makes me look like a, a genius. That's what I hope it makes me look like. But it, it might not. Anyhow, it's in talk stage. It will be like a bunch of interviews with people that knew me, knew the band, played in the band, didn't play in the band. It's a lot of crazy shit that happened. Oh, boy. Yeah, that. I hope that stuff doesn't really get out there because um, I might get never have a job again, honestly. I might, ever be able, I might not be hireable from here on out. Um, and so I hope that I'm looking for any last names here. Uh, before I move on, uh, blah, 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 blah. man, lots of, lots of talk tonight. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. I'm trying to get down to the bottom. Um, uh, no, it's not going to be a movie, Seth. It's going to be like, um, some old footage of the band interviews with old band members, um, our producers, um, maybe Bob Pollard. Um, 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 our French, the, the, our company in France, our label in France, Talatress Records, our label here in the United States, because all of them were just like really frustrated that we never really made it, made it, made it. Sure, we were on some magazine covers. We were on Magnet Magazine, Nouveau Magazine covers. You know, we were a top 50 band for weeks on end uh, at one point on college radio, but we never really made it. Like we sold albums, but we didn't sell enough to make a living. And all of us had jobs. So touring was like what, something we did once a year. We toured once a year. Um, so there you go. Uh, Brett says 122 watching. Hit the like. Oh, that's true. Good point, Brett. Thank you. Do hit the like. If you're watching the show, do like it. Um, no, um, it's a good reminder. We did not make it onto Magnum. <laughs> Or Playboy. 
is Playboy an actually printed paper anymore? And I believe they stopped having models and then they brought them back. Am I wrong to say that? I think that's what happened here. Um, all right, I'm back to the bottom. That's what she said. Um, okay, let's read this. Max, our friend Max Berto says, between now and then, Copa America, I want to see these dudes on commercials, billboards, Fox promos, U.S. soccer, PR, talk shows, J.C. Penny catalogs. <laughs> that shows you how old Max Bredos is. And I'm older than Max. All right. J.C. Penny catalogs. I don't think they make those anymore. But if you were like a adolescent boy, you would get the J.C. catalog out of your mom's little, you know, where she kept all the catalogs and her her recipe magazines and all that. You take that upstairs and you, you try to find a way to take out all the pages with the bra models, right? The bra models. Did they do that for Sears Robot too? I don't remember the brand. All I know is you needed something to spank it to, right? Um, if you didn't have like uh, available, well, at one point my mom found my Playboy stash. And that's really embarrassing when you're like 14 years old. It's really embarrassing. And um, you know what? She never said anything. They were just gone. She never mentioned it. She never brought it up. That's how my family was. It's really weird. Like at one point, pretty sure my parents knew that Jessica and I were banging and uh, in, in my bedroom. And they just said, eh, what's you going to do? And do a thing. They knock on the door and say, "Hey, you children, stop doing that." I mean, I was sixteen, you know, so I was old enough, and so was she. She was eighteen. Actually, she's older than me. So, yeah, uh, kind of how it happens. Now, he also goes on to say, uh, "Catalogs, chatter, uh, Church of the Latter Day Saints pamphlets." Now, that's not going to happen, but that is funny shit. Funny shit. Um, now, the whole thing is none of it's going to happen. There's not going to be any. I mean, there might be a commercial. I hope it's better than the U.S. women's national team commercial before the last World Cup, where it's the world, the whole world plotting on how they're going to beat the U.S. women's national team. Like we were, you know, the precipice. We were so far ahead of everybody else. They were going to need to cheat to beat us. What a fucking joke. They better not make a commercial like that trash. That was garbage. Repulsive garbage. Do not make, and it's not, wasn't even funny. Like, you're going to do it. Have a commercial that's actually funny. That shit's not funny. It wasn't funny. So whatever they do, if they want to make something funny, hire people who are funny. That's what I would do. I would hire someone funny, not from anybody generally of the current youngest generation. Do not hire them. Do not hire anybody from the Ivy League to make your commercials for you. All right. Don't do that. Go find actually funny people. OK, probably won't find a whole lot of those on SNL anymore. Probably not. That show used to be really funny. So go find whoever used to write for them. Whoever it is, you can find somebody to write something funny that would be um, like a showdown at the OK Canal or uh, Corral or whatever. And then you have on one side, you got Wes and Polisic and Musa and uh, Raina dressed in cowboy outfits. And on the other side, you got Brazil dressed up, I don't know, in the same way, cowboy outfits. And it's a standoff, right? I think that would be fun. And then have some good banter between the two, some funny banter. Something funny, though. Something funny. If you're going to do a commercial, we will probably see a commercial. Will it just be Greg yelling? African dogs? Will it be Greg showing a PowerPoint? I don't know. I do not know. But it shouldn't be. If they think the show stuff they're showing us generally behind the, the crest stuff is inspiring to the people that watch it, they are sadly mistaken because there is nothing in the least bit inspiring about what Greg Berhalter has to say or whatever comes out of Greg Berhalter's mouth. Go watch the 2002 documentary um, of the 2002 U.S. Men's National Team World Cup journey. 
That shit that Bruce said was real shit. Real. It was from his gut. He didn't overthink it. He just he said it. Came out of his mouth. That's real people's, right? Um, but if you're going to rely on Greg to bring you humor or entertainment in a commercial, you are seriously going to have a big time problem. As for commercials, uh, I mean, billboards, I don't see it. You could do it, but I don't see it happening. Fox promos, we'll see. Is Fox, I believe, are the ones that are hosting Copa? There better be fucking promos, stupid fuckers. Well, oh, that didn't work, did it? So that better happen. But U.S. soccer doing their own promotions, they're bad at in general. I don't necessarily think sending these kids out to talk on talk shows is going to help them. They probably need to go on, I don't know, go on Joe Rogan, go on to something people watch. Nobody watches talk shows anymore. Last I looked, um, what's his name? Stephen, Stephen Colbert has like a million viewers. A million? That's it? Back in the day, Jay Leno, David Letterman. Man, they are stacking up the millions and millions and millions. But today's shows don't crack. They don't crack anything. Go on big time shows that people listen to and talk. I mean, I'm not saying Joe Rogan would have ballistic on. I don't think Joe Rogan knows the least bit about soccer. Uh, I don't think he'd even be interested. Maybe he would. I don't know. But I don't think the talk shows are going to do it. It doesn't hurt. But I don't know if um, Jimmy Fallon knows uh, Dick Squad about soccer. I don't know if he does. Not that that matters either. I guess I could ask him general questions. But the, the biggest star player is Pulisic, and he's a shy, inverted, uh, introverted, quiet person. So I don't think that's going to help. Sending Reina out, I don't think that's going to help. The only guy who has the kind of sizzle, there's two of them. Like, McKenny's got the sizzle. Send him out to the shows. He's got sizzle. He can probably handle He can be funny. Um, if you want some guy who's going to speak eloquently about the program and their plans and what they want to do and his journey, that's Tyler Adams, right? Um, if you want somebody who can speak to elderly people, then you send Tim Reed. You can send him to the um, AARP conference to recruit the oldies to come watch the game. All right. Uh, looking through the chat. Uh, see if I didn't miss anything. Uh, I don't know what this means. I'm just, not, I'm just not trying to blow everyone. What's your limit, Al? What is it like? Would you do a 10, 10 man? What's your limit? Where do you want to stop the blowing? Five, six, eight, 10, 15. There is a limit. Like there's only so much one person can handle. And you do need time to take a breath. Ah, I'm not even sure that's what you mean. I don't know who you're talking to. All right. Uh, I'm just not trying to blow everyone. <laughs> I wish I knew what the hell you were talking about. All right. So let's go see if we can find a new slide. We already did jizz, right? Okay. Let's get to this. I told you we we're going to talk about this earlier. Um... I want to do, oh, well, he did reply. I want to do four. Is it because it's an easy number or because you're good at using both hands and feet? And that way you're like an octopus ejaculator. Uh, except an octopus has eight legs. You would have four extensions. Um, so probably not the best comparison. But that does show that you got some incredible dexterity, etc. 
All right, what's going on with my screen? All right, this is not good. Let's remove that and then add it back to stage. Okay. Okay, won't do four. Now, make up your mind, Al. I won't do four. Okay, okay, you won't do four. So it's got to be more. I misread you. Sorry. I won't do four. <laughs> All right. I don't have any idea where the chat's going. That is absolutely correct. Um, uh, and a spider only has eight legs. Um, I mean, four guys for two holes and two hands. That's another option, I guess. Wait, two holes? T two? I guess. Mouth and butt? All right. Well, that was Jack, by the way, just so he gets credit. All right. Um. I wrote this. Honestly, the fact that Gio Reyna got 13 minutes at all versus Fulham on Tuesday was surprising. Force, we're up three to one. Why would you put in an offensive, a mostly, mostly offensive player with 13 minutes to go? Maybe Nuno trusts Reyna's defensive prowess enough to let him close out the win. Positive side. And then we got two people who immediately posted to me and said the following. Well, he brought him in because possession. He'll he'll keep possession, and the other team won't get the ball. And he'll distribute and possess and do the tempo of the game. And I thought to myself, well, yes, that's theoretically just fine. Theoretically, that's true. Theoretically, that could happen. Theoretically, did it happen? No. Theoretically, was it likely to happen? No. It wasn't. Fulham were pushing hard forward. And they had all almost all the possession in the whole time that Reyna was in there. I don't think Nuno thought that they were going to gain possession much at all. I think Nuno trusts Reyna play some defense. And guess what? He did. And he went out there and he played defense. That's a good sign. That means when they are up three to one or two to one going forward in a game, we're going to still see Gio Reyna, I think, going forward. If we got a tie game or they're down by one, I think you say see 30 minutes, 40 minutes of Gio Reyna going forward. So I guess all being to say, as you can see with this picture, I got my positivity shoulder beating the living hell out of my negative thoughts. Because we have all had the negative thoughts, right? I had already almost defrosted my crow in my freezer. and. I, going into this game, once they went up 3-1, I'm like, well, the only reason I'm watching this right now is because I'm a Fulham fan, because there's no way Rain is coming in this game. And then, lo and behold, with 15, 20 minutes left of the game, boom, there he is on the side of the field. And I'm like, what's he doing? We've not seen this yet. Reina coming into a game they are winning that they're winning by a, a margin and all they need to do is play defense to um, make sure the game's over. So, uh, yeah, theoretically, I agree with Brett that if you can keep the ball away from your opponent through possession, using a guy like Reyna, theoretically, yeah, if they can't get possession, they can't score because they don't have the ball. I think that's just theory. Because watching that game, I think anybody watching the way that game was evolving, you knew Fulham were going balls out for that last 15, 20 minutes. They were going balls out. They were going to have most of the possession. Um, that Nottingham Force were dropping deeper already. And they were just going to try to hold on to that. So what it means to me is that maybe Nuno is gaining trust in Reina as a defender. Right, because that was the big, that was the big poo-poo on Reina. He doesn't try hard. He doesn't run hard on defense. Well, that didn't happen. He ran his ass off on defense in that game. He was all over the field playing defense. He would press high when needed, but he'd get his ass back and make sure the wings were covered too. So I don't know. We'll see what happens. I'm just trying to find any glimmer of light in the end of the tunnel, and I really don't want to eat that crow yet. I'm probably going to have to eat it, but we'll see, right? We'll see. Let me find another slide. 
Oh yeah, this is some doesn't work. I know why Brett does not use this slide system at all because it's a pain in the rumpus. It's better to do the tabs. Way better, Brett. I've learned my lesson. All right, let's talk about this. Let's just get this done with, right? Um, uh, what's this argument? What's going on? Reyna was not carrying Dortmund. No, I mean, but he was, I mean, when Holland was there, those were the fun times, man. As Holland used to call Reyna the American dream during those after game interviews with Wes's face on ESPN FC. Um, yeah, it, it was a lot of fun. Now here, see, Brett, you have supporters. This show isn't the same without Brett. Well, of course it's not the same. Of course it's not, my brother. How could it be the same? That's just not how things work. Um, I mean, I couldn't be me and Brett at the same time. That's just not going to happen. All right. So uh, let me see. Am I missing any chats? Do, 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 do. Uh, not really. Yeah, this one's a good one, though. It should be interesting what happens at Dortmund this summer. Terzic beat just beat Bayern. Not sure he leaves Dortmund. I think the talk is, yes, he's still going to go. Um, because even with the win against Bayern, who are, I mean, this is not a Bayern I even recognize. I don't recognize this whack-ass team that's had so many, like, games where it looked like they could give two fucks out there. Um, I still don't think Terzic really has ever wanted to necessarily be the coach. It's not really what he was there to do. Um... And there's lots to talk about the search. So we'll see what happens. You could be right. You could be right. He could stay. And that's not really going to be good for Reyna. I don't think. Um, but I don't know. All right. Let's get to this topic. Because we had U.S. Stan, U.S. Men's National Team Stan, a.k.a. Adam, made a plea today right before the show. I read it. Didn't have time. To make it into a slide. Um, but he did say, um, you know, we can't talk about this kid online, right? Um, because he's gonna read it, it's gonna affect him. I mean, really, in a perfect world, okay, let's not talk about the 14 year old. I get it, but that ain't happening, and we all know that ain't happening, Adam. We know it ain't, it's not happening. People are going to talk about this kid constantly. And by the way, his whole family, his brothers, post all this shit up on social media. There's really no way to get around the fact that Kevin or Kevin has embraced this stardom. And his family has too. And they have no problem pumping all his stuff onto social media. So uh, with that in mind, asking everybody not to comment on it um while noble is unrealistic and i know you've had a lot of dealings with young basketball players and you've seen how it affects them but at this point i think the most of these of whatever's going to get posted about Kevin or kevin whatever his name is is going to be positive because all of us are thirsty for the next superstar and if he's a superstar and he keeps heading towards superstardom, he's just going to be embraced. Um, he's just going to be loved. Loved on. <clears throat> yeah, there will be the Yanks who will say he's just going to be another Freddie Adu. There will be the stinky spinkters on X who have to um, spew their ass juice all over the the landscape, the X landscape, because that's what they're there to do. But I'm not sure that this 14-year-old, uh, I don't think he cares much. 
I think he's pretty confident. In fact, the one thing I would say about Kevin, Kevin, can does anybody know how to pronounce this kid's name? Anybody yet? Is it Kevin or Kevin? Let me know in the chat. Let me know. In this particular pay, uh, post, it says the Kevin Sullivan coverage is just too much at this point. Did we learn nothing from Madu? Why are multiple top U.S. men's national team pages doing this much? He could be averaged by 19. That's true. Just let this kid do his thing. Listen, I mean, he's right about he could be average at 19. He could never grow an inch from here. Freddie Adu stopped growing. Maybe because he was 18 when he was 14. We don't know. <coughs> or... <coughs> Remember Lewis Gill? <coughs> Recruited by Arsenal. <clears throat> Turned down the Arsenal Academy. <clears throat> Everybody thought he was going to be the next jizz sickle. Everybody's on that. And he never grew another inch either. After the age of 15. Not that you need to be tall. But it helps. Because not everybody can be messy. All right. So let's hope he continues to grow. He's 14. And if his brothers are an indication, he will continue to grow. And he will probably get somewhere around six foot, which I think is a pretty, um, that's a large enough mammal these days for soccer. Um, yeah, here's another one from Erlen Holland. People were jizzing over Caden Clark. Yes, they were. And we were warning you not to. At the time, we told you he doesn't play. Especially after his appendicitis, he doesn't play. Didn't play. Um, Red were like, eh. We changed our minds. Send him away. Where is he now? MLS. And you're right. People were just in all over the walls about Caden Clark. I think this is a little different. I honestly do. I do think that Caven Cavan is... Seems to be a really spectacular player. I think he's a little too tricky for his own good based on now what I've seen. But I still think uh, he's a good player. I think he's a very, very one-footed right now. Um, that could change. I don't see a lot of um, footage in games that I've watched so far where, you know, um, he's hit some rockets with his right. I could be wrong. Most of the footage I've seen are all left-footed endeavors. Um, that doesn't mean he he doesn't have a right foot. I just, there's not a lot of footage of this kid out there yet. It's just, they're just not. It's not a lot to watch. So, you know, it's impossible to make a judgment. But he looks pretty spectacular for his age, playing against a lot older players. I think he was 14 playing against 60-year-olds and just juking them. So there's skill there. There's, there's a high ceiling. We shall see what it is. Um, let me see. Somebody said, Nate says, not one-footed at all. That's good to hear, Nate. Um, I mean, if you get to go to the games and watch his games, let me know. Because obviously, I don't. I can only watch what I can find on YouTube and otherwise. So that's not a lot, honestly, right now. <clears throat> all right, break time. Break time! Da -na -na -na. Nah, 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 nah. Drink it. I got to make another drink. See, right about now, Brett would be talking about something while I make a drink. There wouldn't be a lull in the game, right? Can't trust this. Let me reload here. Tonight, I'm drinking the vodka in the Canada Dry, zero sugar. That should be no freaking 
surprise. As you know, I've been cutting out the beer. It's probably why I've lost, what did I say, 12 pounds, somewhere around there so far. Hoping to lose another 13 before my parents get back from Florida. Because when they left for Florida, I was a whale. I was an extremely large mammal. And as I said before, if I were on a beach, people would push me back into the water. It was getting that bad. I put on so much weight. So, uh, I'm, you know, I'm my man boobs are decreasing. Um, uh, I don't know if it's even noticeable on this particular platform. But so, yeah, good to hear he's not one footed. Uh, Adam, I really don't think you're going to get your wish, buddy. I mean, I'm not trying to be a prick. Um, certainly, we love you. But, um, I mean, it was like a four uh, post after post after post after post of a post of guidelines for why we shouldn't talk about uh, Kevin Sullivan. Kevin Sullivan. We just come up with a nickname for him. Uh, Cecil. Cecil. That's not very good. All right. I'm going to remove this slide. Let's see what else we got to cover. We still got Yanks abroad, too. I guess we got plenty of time. We're only an hour and 11 minutes in, huh? Not too bad. All right. Um, let's go to CB depth. Let's do that one. All right. What's the oh, come on, man. Uh, let's see here. Let's see if I met, missed any chats. I'm just going back. Yep, beer makes you fat. That's totally true. Especially expensive, expensive Belgian beers. Um, yeah, I totally thought you were fasting or something. Oh, don't be that nice. Come on, man. Is it that? I don't think so. I don't really notice, but I don't notice because I live with me. You know, there's lots of things you don't notice when you see someone every day. And then it's sort of a gradual depletion. Um, but uh, I had a friend who just sent me. This is weird. So I have this really, a friend I've known since I was like, I don't know, 20. Another musician, great friend of mine. And he sends me weird pictures. And apparently he was in the hospital and he had already lost in the hospital um, like five pounds in two days as they were prepping for the surgery. He had multiple problems, but one of them was a cyst. He sends me a picture of a cyst. Really? You're going to send me a picture of your disgusting pussy cyst? He thought it was hilarious. That's just disgusting. I don't want to see that. And that's what I told him. I said, don't send me that shit. I don't want to see that shit. I said, when I was in the hospital, did I send you a picture of my balls when they were the size of watermelons? Because my intestines have dropped into them. Did I send you those? He's like, no, you didn't. Laughing out loud. Well, yeah. Why would I? I didn't want anybody to see that. I didn't want to see it. Did I send you my balls after they were fixed and say, hey, look, they fixed them. Do, did I do a before and after like you're about to do? Keep your maladies to yourself, people. Don't take pictures of your problems, your medical problems. What is up with that? What are all these shows about popping boils and, and pimples? It's disgusting. I can't watch any of that. It makes me want to vomit. And this is, listen, it's okay if I have to deal with it, right? So they fixed my nutsack. And it was sewn up and all that. So that there was fluids. So there was things that were removing fluids from my guts too. There was a tube literally in my stomach coming out of my stomach and out of my body into a hand grenade. That's all gross. And I can handle my own grossness. But I don't want to see yours. All right. Uh, let's see here. This is a good point. Uh, the flavored Canada dry is nasty as fuck. I have not had it yet. Is that the one with the cherry in it or whatever? Can, uh, cranberry? 
Yeah. Derek must have a massive sack. I did when I had a massive life-threatening hernia. Like literally a giant percentage portion of my intestines dropped into my testicle uh, system. In fact, they taught me or they told me before they wheeled me into surgery after doing all these medical scans on my nutsack that I might not, they might have to take them away, which was fine. I had already had kids. Um, I was worried about how that might affect my, my whole uh, solo operation, but I, uh, yeah. So no, I did not have elephant. <laughs> I did not have elephantitis, Al. Did you just hear what I said? I had massive hernia, like one of the biggest hernias they'd ever seen. And it's so funny. I went into the doctor or into the hospital and I got into the emergency room and the nurse was there and she said, so what's your problem? Nothing more embarrassing than have to drop, you know, your drawers and go, well, look at that. <laughs> what do you think about that? <laughs> and I thought, honestly, I did think this because, you know, I'm a positive minded guy, right? <laughs> about my own nutsack, at least. And uh, I really thought that um, they'd be OK. I was like, they're going to give me some. um antibiotics or something it was an infection it would go away i should have known better anyhow point being don't send gross pictures of yourself to your friends all right <laughs> how'd the hernia happen um i don't know that's the worst part i didn't lift anything heavy i didn't do anything i technically did nothing and so they thought it was something that must have happened a long time before and was a slow tear. And then I did something that caused it to totally rip open. So I, I apparently had had it for a while. I didn't know it. And then it went from a, a small tear to a larger tear to a larger tear. And then at some point it just gave out completely. So, and I never knew it. And I like, they asked me, would you lift lately? I said, nothing. I don't remember lifting anything that heavy lately. Anyhow, weird times. Um, oh, we got to get rid of that. Trusty would be emergency left back and backup CB. So we're talking about CB depth. Oh, look at this. Look at this. Here's a guy who can't. <laughs> I hope Nate didn't live, leave because of the testicle talk and the cyst discussion. Um, I hope we didn't scare him away with that. Uh, um, no, I says that's be a good story to tell chicks at a bar. Um, probably, probably. Yeah. I think that's a good story to tell anybody at a bar because you're drinking. Um, so yeah. I think I agree with you. Tell chicks, tell this to us, the story to chicks at a bar. I actually have it told to one chick at a bar that she's somebody that came to visit me at the hospital and I'd known for 20 plus years. And so she was really cool with it. And she was laughing her ass off while I was telling her. And this was just like right after it happened. And I was still wearing the grenade on my hip. Yeah. Still wearing the grenade on my hip and I lost 55 pounds and I look like a scarecrow. I weighed 168 pounds. Because after the operation, I was in the hospital for another multiple weeks and all I ate was jello and drank water. Yeah. I lost a load of weight. And uh, in fact, once I got out there, like, you got to eat, dude. And I'm like, I kind of lost my hunger. And they're like, but you got to eat. Go out and buy whatever you got to buy. But buy shit you shouldn't eat and eat it because you need to eat. All right. So long story. It was, that was the, and you know, the greatest thing about that whole experience is I thought I was going to be a real pussy about that. I thought when somebody said, yeah, well, you might die in this operation and when we try to put all your intestines back in you uh, it might cause trauma um 
and you might lose your nutsack. And they were wheeling me in and I called my mom and I said, yeah, I'm going to surgery. They're like, she's like, what do you mean you're going into surgery? Yeah. I mean, I just showed up here a few hours ago. They're like, this is emergency surgery and it needs to happen now. So, but it's not a big deal. Uh, I'll be fine. No reason to pay. Well, we're heading down there right now. That's what my mom said. And, uh, but I didn't, you just sort of say to yourself, what am I going to do about it? I'm in their hands now. And by the way, I've had a pretty damn good life. What am I complaining about? I had a great life. If this is it, it's it. But if I can hold on to my balls, I'd like to do that. And then that was the first exciting news the doctor <laughs> delivered to me when I came out of um, out of anesthesia. By the way, we saved your fuzzy ones. <laughs> he didn't say that. I mean, he said testicles or whatever medical term it was. But um, anyhow, I wouldn't recommend... Um, so if you want to lose 13 pounds, you just need another hernia. Yeah, I lost a lot more than that. I lost 55 pounds. Uh, so, yeah, I wouldn't recommend uh, that you do it that way. But then I didn't really have much choice. So Matthew O says never eat dinner and listen to the straight red card at the same time. Also wear headphones if you aren't alone. <laughs> All right. Usually, I think soccer talk has been through most of the show. Uh, we talked about foreskin earlier, and now we're talking about my friend sending me that cyst photo, which cyst photo, which led to this. Um, yeah, I'm sorry about that, Matthew. Um, I hope I didn't make you puke up your food. All right, let's get to these CBs this year. <coughs> all right, I got to take another <clears throat> drink break here. Um, thank you all, by the way, all. 115 of you uh, that have showed up for this solo stream, this auto fillet of show. <laughs> um, you know, there's another thing I got to get out there. Uh, I saw tax show about promotion and relegation. And I thought not another show about promotion and relegation. I don't think we can take any more shows about promotion and relegation. A, because I don't think it's going to change regardless of how much we ask for it, it's not changing. But I'm not watching any more shows about promotion and relegation as much as I love attacked. I can't do it. Couldn't click on it, man. Because I've heard all the arguments already. I've made the arguments myself. I can't do anymore. And you just got to start looking at in reality here. And reality is, there is no way, there is no way way MLS is ever going to be forced into by U.S. soccer. <laughs> U.S. soccer is going to force them to actually have a real pyramid? No. Because J.T. Batson has a ball sack about the size of an average squirrel. And so does U.S. soccer. They're not going to force them to do anything. They got all the control. MLS has got all the money. They got all the billionaire owners. They got the sway. None of the billionaire owners are ever going to relent to pro rel. I'm sorry. I hate to say it. I know I've said it on the show before, but those videos aren't worth watching anymore. Now, you can go watch it if you want. I'm not saying don't watch tax because tax good stuff, but... Folks, reality is reality. And at some point, either you understand what reality is or you do a lot of acid and live in a, a Disney world. And there's nothing, or you smoke a lot of dope. Weed. I prefer the second one, uh, weed. I took a lot of, well, a lot, so not a, I took some acid. In my younger years, I wasn't that big of a fan of that or shrooms. Like I'd have good ones, then I have the bad ones, but the bad ones outweighed the good ones. So anyhow, the other thing I want to say to Tack is, how in hard is it to say Plymouth? Plymouth Argyle. Oh, man. <laughs> Plymouth Argyle. 
there's a car company in the United States. It used to be called Plymouth. There's in Plymouth Rock. And you're calling Plymouth Argyle Plymouth? Come on, man. That's like you saying Oopin. For like... <laughs> All right, I'm texting him after this. I got to let him know how to say Plymouth because he's now said Plymouth for two shows in a row. You can't say Plymouth. You can't say that. It's it's not wood. It's not something you could buy at Menards. It's Plymouth. Like we got Plymouth Rock. Do we not know that too? We got a Plymouth in the United States. All right. Thank you, Julian uh, Vivas for the four ninety nine. dollars Do you think Scally should be a center back for the U.S. men's national team instead of right back. Also, what do you think of Maximilian Dietz? If you've watched this show before, Julian, you may have caught me in a little bit of a semi-lube discussion, a semi-wax the dolphin discussion about Maximilian Dietz, whom I rate extremely high. Okay? I rate him very high because I've watched him for a couple of years. I'm not saying he's going to turn into the thing, but it's the only player that I have absolutely guaranteed and predicted will be a U.S. men's national team contributor at center back at some point in his career, definitely by 2030. He's a little young, not too young, not too young. And he's being scouted by all the top mid table teams in Bundesliga. And he's had a really good season with uh, Greuther Firth, who uh, I think are in seventh now. But it, for a lot of the season, they were fighting for promotion. I, they they kind of diarrheaed all over their own um, ankles in the last couple months. Oh, and I say diarrhea on your ankles. That can happen if you're standing straight up when it happens, right? Another thing you probably don't want to hear right now if you're eating oatmeal. So my apology. Or soup, right? Don't want to hear about diarrhea when you're eating soup. Okay, Jesse Negron says, exactly. It's intellectual masturbation, the PNR conversation. It'll never happen. They're asking for 500 million fee to start a franchise. They would never do that if there were ever a chance of getting pro rail. Exactly. And that fee, I believe now it's higher. I believe it's now higher. Right? I think it's uh, scheduled to go higher soon. AJ1410, me, 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 for 199 Thank you, AJ. Is Esmir someone that can break into right wing for us? Uh, eventually. Not this moment. He's showing. He's impressive. He's got learning to do. He's got a pretty good soccer IQ, but it can only get better. The ball sticks to his feet like glue. He's reminiscent to, you know, a lot of the things Raina was doing early on. I don't know if he's going to be that good. But sure looks promising. Again, not whipping out the lube yet for Esmir because, like, we just started nose, uh, noticing uh, Barak Tarovic the last couple of years and really starting to stand out the last year, right? Um, be careful, Derek. It's not tax fault. His first language is Portuguese and not English. No, I, I totally get it. That's why I'm just busting his balls. When he came on the show last time, I said, by the way, you and Pete, Pete's first language is English. Both are pronouncing and have been pronouncing Oipen wrong for like months. And the worst thing is I texted them and let them know and they ignored it. And they kept doing it. Like, listen to what I'm telling you. I'm not going to be careful because they're my friends. And they know I'm just kidding around. So um, I don't have to be careful around either of those two guys. We've known each other for three years now. Um, yeah, 
I mean, it's not like we just come on each other's shows either. We keep in touch outside of the shows. So it's not, you know, just a, uh, I'll be on your show occasionally and you'll be on mine kind of thing. Like, we keep in touch. All right. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba, what are we doing? What? Mo what? Monitored? I don't know what that means. Um, uh, Dietz and Neil are the pairing of the future. Really, I hope you're right, Fumar, because, I mean, I still think there's Richardson's in a little bit of a funk right now, playing for country, sometimes for club. Um, last game wasn't so great either for Richards. Reen's going to not last forever unless he's visited the Fountain of Youth. You know, Brooks is banned. Some people outright think Brooks sucks. There are people on X. But it wouldn't matter if he sucked Hoover or not sucked. No amount of sucking by Brooks will get him onto the U.S. Men's National Team. And I love the people who said, well, he made Greg 60-man roster. Did you see where he was listed? Out of alphabetical order as an afterthought at number 58 or 59, like that is a slap in the face. That's like, who else can we add on here? Well, if we add John Brooks, it'll get those mothers off our back, man. They'll stop talking about it because it'll just prove that we're keeping an eye on them, right? Hey, Michael, that sounds like a good idea. Let's just put him on there. Actually, Greg doesn't talk that fast. That sounds like a good idea, Michael. Let's just put him on the list. Yeah. Yeah, let's do that. That should keep um, the media off our, our, our little man marbles. Well, no, it's not going to, except for Max Bredos apparently thought that was proof. Um, who else? It's called Soccer Guy. I think he said the same thing or intimated it. I don't think he said it. Jake, I like Jake, by the way, it's not a critique. I love Max too, but you can't be fooled by these things, especially when the evidence is sitting in front of your face and the evidence says he was an afterthought. He was the eighth center back listed on the list. Come on, quit pretending. Can we all quit pretending? All right. I am, you guys are talking so fast. I'm having a hard time keeping up. So hold on here. Let me scroll and see what I mess. And maybe you're not talking fast. It's just that I'm slow. Uh, or I'm talking a lot. Pete grew up in Thailand. That is true. But it's not his first language. That'd be like saying I grew up in Germany. Yes, I did. But I still learned to speak English with a German accent, which didn't help me when we moved back to the United States. Um, the kids used to make fun of me. All right. Uh, so U.S. step chart. Yeah, it's still this is this is a good list. Richards is on there for sure. Reem on there for sure. CCV on there for sure. Yeah, and the only reason I think you put Robinson on there is because Greg loves him some Robinson. Okay. And uh personally, I think Trusty's the one getting totally fucked in this whole thing. Because I just watched him play left back today. None of the goals that were scored today were by Liverpool were his fault. None. And he had a really solid game shutting down Sala. Like Sala was had some shots, but I mean it wouldn't it's not like Sala burned his ass in this game. Thought he played pretty good, trusty. But he ain't playing left back, people. Yes, okay. Technically, is he playing? Left back in a back five. Yes, he is. But he's playing left back like a in center back. Let's be really honest here. I mean, Sheffield United played a flat five, not a back three. They played a flat five, three, two. I mean, that is ugly shit to watch really bad i don't know how those guys in the midfield and up top 
could keep up with the game because three midfielders in front of that back five couldn't cover all the space and all the midfielders from Liverpool. There was always something open. And like the top two guys had to run like banshees and barely touch the ball, yet they still managed to somehow miraculously score and tie the game. And then, of course, Liverpool did what Liverpool did. Right? All right. Uh, let's see. Let's check the chat. Make sure I didn't miss anything. Uh, BMR says, CB is pretty grim. Um, Yeah. It's not our strongest position at all. It is probably our weakest. Right now. Richards, not at his best. Ream. Um, the hairs on his testicle are turning gray. His testicles. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to chop one of Bream's uh, nuts off. But let's just say the man is getting old. We all know that. The clock is ticking. We need to find somebody else. Jalen Neal is so young. And then, you know, he's injured right now. Serious injury he just is getting over. Big time injury. Will that affect him? Weiner, injured. Um, who's the other kid in France? CB we sent over. Um, that's on loan from his club team to a lower level. Yeah, promising. Right? Promising. But, um, yeah, it's not the strongest area. CCV hasn't challenged himself at a high, high level yet. McKenzie's playing in Belgium. Whoopie do. Right? Um, EPB is lost in Greece. Has an injury, hasn't played but one game all season. Uh, who else? Trusty. I mean, he's not really trusted to be a center center. I mean, he's played lots of center back this season. But I'm not sure it's on an actual EPL team. It's kind of like a championship team playing in the EPL. Not to denigrate it. He should get credit for that. That's more than what McKenzie's doing, honestly. Could McKenzie start for an EPL team? I don't know. I haven't seen McKenzie really challenged there. I've seen him challenged when he plays at Gank against teams that are quite tiny and small and irrelevant. And I'm thinking, ooh, he's having a bad game playing against Westerlo? Really? Okay. So we shall see here. Um, let's see. What else did I want to cover here? It's time to drink. If you have a drink, now's the time to pick up that drink and to drink it. I'm going to do the same thing here. Uh, let's see. Copa America Power Rankings. Ooh, boy. But can you argue? Somebody else, by the way, said goalkeeper. Where did I miss that? Uh, is that Fumar? Fumar says goalkeeper is our weakest position. Yeah, it's our most average. Kind of like, eh. When you think of Turner, you're like, yeah, that'll do. I didn't used to feel like that about Turner. I felt like he might get like better with his feet. He might get better with his decision making. His shot stopping's great, but now that's not even that good. So, yeah, it's a concern, Fumar. No doubt, brother. That is a concern. And uh, I wish I didn't have to worry about it, but I do. Kobe Henry, correct. Fumar is the other guy in the lower leagues of France that headed over there. We had Justin Che, who was a promising center back. And most of the airs come out of that bubble, right? Josh Winders, what, in Portugal? The injury has burst that bubble for now. So we'll see. 
Um, what happens there? Uh, Winkley Gonzalez says, um, I have a conspiracy theory that Reem will retire this year with the national team and later he will be take charge of the U.S. men's national team's coach. <laughs> I'm calling it. Can you imagine it, Derek? Hey, man, I don't know. I think he needs a little more experience before taking over as the coach. But somebody did ask him in a press conference if he could consider coaching when he retires. And uh, it wasn't resounding yes. It was not a resounding yes. Um, I think BJ would still do a better job. I think Hudson would still do a better job at this point. But who couldn't? Who couldn't do a better job? Oh, I have to say, can I, can, I got to say this, guys. NBC Sport, NBC Sports, 8.2 million subscribers last I looked. No, 3.8, I'm sorry. 3.8 million subscribers to NBC Sports. Pro Soccer Talk. Um, their show gets about 8,000 views. It's better than our show gets. I mean, not every show we've done. I don't think we, I mean, we've had some in the six and the five range, but not eight. But we don't have 3 million subscribers. And I give them credit. Their show used to be so boring. I used to put it on to go to sleep. I think they're having a better time. I watched it today. I don't know why I watched it. It was better. They laughed. They told some jokes. That was good to see. That show needed some life. It was like that show had definitely some problems with flaccidity. Like they needed a pill. So the show's improved, but boy, were they on the bad bandwagon that, you know, the United States has just absolutely shown how much dominance, how dominant it is over the rest of CONCACAF. Did they watch the Jamaica game? Did they watch the Trinidad and Tobago game? Just because they beat Mexico. Okay, we're dominating Mexico because they're willing to play us up, up. You can't go out and say we're dominating all of CONCACAF. Do you know what our away record is? That's not domination, dude. I don't mean, domination. Domination is absolutely ripping everyone's asshole apart on a regular basis. That's domination. Yeah, we got the trophies, but it's not like we got by Jamaica because we kicked their ass. We barely got out of that, right? Barely. I, I'm not, I don't think domination is a word people should be using, but that's the word they used. I am happy to know that their show is better, though. I watched it and I didn't fall asleep. And I don't want to say that to offend those guys that don't know them. I'm sure they're great reporters at what they do. One of them, particularly, I really like. I think he's got like the most insightful character on there. Whereas the guy who hosts it, the English dude, is sort of, eh. he's more a Mr. General. And that's okay. You guys, I guess you need Mr. General, you know, on your show. Um, so there you go. Uh, here's a good McKenzie isn't standing out for gang. I would agree with that. That is a, in my opinion, an accurate statement. All right, time for a little break. <coughs> mm. You know, it's hard for talking for two hours by yourself. <clears throat> your, your throat does get a little rough. Ah. What the hell is this about? Being lost in Greece sounds terrible. <laughs> Not that kind of Greece. Get your mind out of the gutter, Justin. Unless you're talking about the movie. Grease 1 was fantastic. Grease 2? Horrible. The one with John Travolta and... Uh, oh, shit, the Australian hottie. Forgot her name. Great movie. Very fun to watch. Back when I was a kid. Grease 2... 
with Michelle Pfeiffer and some dude that I don't even know, can't remember if he ever amounts to anything more. Not so good. All right. So uh, not that kind of grease, my brother. Not that kind of grease. Uh, yeah, so that's five capable CBs, correct? That's about what we got. Capable is a good word. I would say Reem would be a level above everybody else we have. He can do things. He reads the game better than anybody else we have. He's just old. But he has the highest soccer IQ. And he has pluses and positives. His passing abilities. So that's something to keep in mind. Because we don't have anybody else who can switch fields. And I know I'm like a broken record. I've been saying this forever. But come on. When you can take a bonus, you take the bonus. Um, Let's see. Where are we at? Yes, Brooks isn't getting called up. I'm trying to scroll down, see if I missed anything or anybody. I'm sure everything you guys are saying is absolutely apropos and appropriate. And I should read them all, but I don't have time to because that's a lot to read. Uh, wow, oh, wow. Man, I got to catch the hell up. You guys are just speeding by me here. Uh, Brooks and Reem, yeah, uh, Brooks and Reem, Burt Halter's pettiness aside, yeah, I don't think you can play them both on the same pitch at the same time. I don't know if that's what you're saying. They're both very, very left footed left center backs, they both have only ever played left center back or left back in their careers, I believe. Um, so kind of tough. Uh, John says, I believe that Fumar got it first, I think. Can't stand musicals. Too weird. I agree with you. Couldn't get into Oklahoma Broken. Couldn't get into all music. There's only two musicals I could watch. Grease and Luck Be a Lady with Marlon Brando. Only two ones I can stand. Maybe that makes me culturally inferior. I don't know. It might. It might. All right. Let's look at Copa America here. <clears throat> Copa America. These are the power rankings uh, according to CIWYW. If that is your acronym, you need to shorten it. That's way too long. Um, <laughs> maybe if the girls were naked, I might be into it. You mean in Greece? You're the one that I love. You know, I just like the songs in that. They're very well written. Um, in fact, I we did a fun little loving color of cover of uh, Hopelessly Devoted to You back when I could really sing high. Uh, you can find it somewhere. I think it's on Musical Family Tree. If you go to Musical Family Tree on Google, you look that up and then you go to that and you put in the search Brando, you'll find a bunch of free music. Um, old stuff that we did. All right, so we got Argentina, Brazil, Uruguay, Colombia, United States. Is that arguable? Can you argue against that? It's absolutely... I mean, I know we had Pete on here saying, we should beat, we should beat Colombia. That's, we're capable of beating Colombia. Yeah, I think we're capable. On paper, it looks like a pretty good matchup. But Columbia are playing out of their ball sacks right now. What are they, 11-0, 10-0? I mean, it doesn't bode well. They're playing really, really good soccer right now. But we are on home soil, and it is our chance, if we get to play Columbia, to get our signature win. So, uh, But I guess a lot of people are saying that even if we beat Columbia, that's not that's not going to count as a signature win because it's not Brazil and it's not Argentina and those are the two best teams and that would count as a signature win. I think Pete even said Uruguay wouldn't count. I don't know about all this signature win shit. It's something coming out of Jesse Marsh's mouth like a lot of puke from a baby, right? 
And now everybody's saying it. Taylor Twelman signature win. We got to get that signature win. We got to get it. That's what we really need, bro. That's the one thing Greg doesn't do. He doesn't have the signature win. Sorry. Tight shirt talks fast. Um, who else has said that? We got everybody saying the word signature win. Casey Keller. Fucking Lexi Wallace. Holy shit, it's true. We haven't beat a really good team yet. But ah, the fact that everybody uses the same terminology is just kind of crazy. It's like watching the news. It's like watching all the major news channels say the exact same thing and use the exact same words. And you're like, wow. How did that happen? They sit down together and go, hey, guys, here's the keyword of the day. This is the word you must all use. Must be. They all call each other. Hey, Stu, Stu, when you refer to uh, Lawless's, uh, excuse me, when you refer to Greg's career so far, make sure you say that he's been doing great, but he doesn't have a signature win. Okay? Make sure you say that on Fox. Okay. You got it? No, I'm not going to suck your dick. All right. Bye. I mean, that's seriously the conversations that they must have to pass along the keyword everywhere is really ridiculous. Greg always gets the team to underperform. Yes, he does. What the hell? The password is vagina. <laughs> Oh, boy. Okay. I think I'm at the bottom of the chat. This is why chat gets ahead of you. I'm from my ass out. Um, oh, because I talk? <laughs> That's what I usually do on the show. I can't stop now. Um, all right. Let me see here. What else we got? Mm. He had a chance to beat Wales after Walker Zimmerman. Uh, that up. He put in Morris to play for a draw. In the England game, when we had a free kick, he decided to kick it away from the goal. <coughs> yeah, <clears throat> that was a set piece uh, plan. Um, And let's be really honest, Pulisic set pieces are pretty bad. Up until the last like game versus Mexico, they were better. But they've been pretty bad for some time. Let, but he's going to continue to let Pulisic take the set pieces. Although it's very clear to me, Rain is a better set piece taker, quarter kick taker. Uh, but I don't think even if we beat Wales, that's a um, signature win. It isn't. After Walker Zimmerman, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, yeah. Wales wouldn't have been signature anyhow. England would have been a signature win. That would have been a signature win. I hate saying the word, though, now. Because every Tom, Dick, Harry, Stu, and Alexi are saying signature. It's like, did they all call each other up? It's so fucking weird. At least Eric Winold hasn't said it yet. But I'm pretty sure he's insane. I'm... I'm I'm getting to the point where I think he might be insane. All right, we got one more topic I want to call it. And this is why I want to cover this. The reason I want to cover this is to show you how difficult it is. How hard it is to make any predictions at all about any, any young player. Okay? Here we go. This is Pete. Not long ago... Pete made these off. Oh, I got to get that back up again. Hold on. That's why this sucks. How does Brett do this shit? Mm. Where's the window? Where's the window? Fucking shit. All right. Hold on, people. Don't panic. Don't panic. I'm in control. The plane's not going down. It's not going down. Oh, Jesus. It's just on fire, but it's okay. We're going to shut down the engine and move forward. 
So here are his predictions from two years ago. Okay. Two years ago. This is how difficult this shit can be. And this is his prospects list, right? God damn it. That thing went down again. Uh, technical difficulties. Not really. Not really, but yeah, it's a pain in the ass. Let's just put it that way. I just had it up and now it went away again. Fucking son of a bitch. All right. Uh, here it is. All right. Good enough. So he picked Lap, uh, Gabriel Salunina. That was a great pick two years ago. It's still a great pick now. There is high probability that this kid's going to turn out to be something. We don't know what, but it's not over yet two years later. Okay? Not over yet two years later. Damn it. Move that forward. There we go. Brian Gutierrez. Still in the calling, right? He's still doing well for Chicago. He re-signed with Chicago. Hasn't been talking a lot about going overseas. This is two years ago, Matthew O. What date on this video? Two years ago. Two years ago, I believe. Is when he put this out. Um, not three, is it? No, it's got to be like two years ago. Somewhere around there. No Scorpion Larry today. Just keep in mind, uh, Brett and Larry... Have a real <laughs> I don't want to say a relationship because that sounds like they're um tossing each other's salads or something. But apparently they talk a lot on X. And I thought to myself, how does Brett do that? Because every conversation ends up at the same place at the end, right? <laughs> every conversation ends at the same place. How painful. How painful. All right. Um, in life, it's more complex than that. But it's also simple sometimes. But it's not that simple. It's not that simple. And those of you who are regulars on the show know exactly what the hell I'm talking about. All right. So Brian Gutierrez, good pick by Pete. Brian's still relevant. He's still got a chance. These are his prospects. MLS prospects from two years ago. John Tolkien. Still probably going to make the Olympic team, more than likely. Still possibly relevant, not counting him out yet. He could make a move to Europe. Good pick. So he's got three right so far. Number four, Aiden Morris. I mean, Pete's kicking ass right now. He's got a fourth one right. Aiden Morris is now 22, 23. And, um, yeah, it, he's. this is still a relevant pick. This is a good point. Brett is just a patient man. That's true. He puts the, up with me. He puts up with me. <laughs> That's true. But I ain't no Larry. That takes a lot more patience. Uh, and that's got to be a real struggle sometimes. Um Although, you know, Larry's right on some stuff. Yep. Um, and I'm, I, yeah, Brett definitely suffers full time. <laughs> I have a harder time with that. It's not hard to talk to Larry. You say one thing and he already typed 10 responses. <laughs> That's so true too. Let's just like give everybody a shout here. I think we had a higher number of misses in youth ranks in 03, 04, and 05 birth years than normal because they lost crucial development time during the pandemic that's a theory matthew and it could be possibly relevant um obviously we don't have any scientific way of knowing that for sure um but you know it wasn't good for anybody to be locked up in their house um told to not go to their team practices and now we're learning a lot of things now that a lot of people said back then and were you know told they're morons for saying it and then yeah we're learning kids were really detrimentally affected by that and um some of them lost their senior years which can you imagine just losing your senior year 
It's horrible. Gotta be horrible. That would have been the end of me. Um, I would have missed out on multiple sexual liaisons. I mean, I, would I have like seven different girlfriends over 12 months my last year? I mean, that would have been devastating. What would I have done? I would have to just settle for what happened in my junior year, which was way less exciting, way less, way, way less successful or engaging or, um, you know, I didn't have as many of those kind of experiences my, uh, my junior year. So lots of people lost out on stuff, right? All right. Brian, I'm not trying to brag. I just had a good time, man. It's part of life. And if I guess I could talk like I pretend I'm a fucking virgin if you want me to. I could put on a pair of diapers too. <laughs> it always comes back to how much Derek got laid. <laughs> you know what? When you're 52, Brian, you'll start thinking about your good times too, brother. Trust me. You will go back in time. You'll think, damn, those were good times. Those were really good. You will do it. You will do it. And you'll do it unashamedly. Trust me. You will just be happy that your, your cock and ball still work at my age. All right? But you will find no shame in talking about the glory years. Because guess what? Everything ahead of me ain't glory years. The glory years are long gone. Everything ahead of me is mostly just me and my hand and a jar of Vaseline. Okay? So let a let an old man have a good time, man. Holy Christ. All right. Jesus. Can't brag a little about how good you used to have it? <laughs> you can't brag a little about, you know what? Things were good once. They suck now. But you know what? That's my fault. I chose. I choose for it to be that way now. All right. And look at me. <laughs> I don't think I'm going to have any girls chasing me down anytime soon. Tavon Gray is still in New York City, I believe. Yes, right? But now, this is one of Pete's picks. He now is captied by Jamaica, right? Glory days. Do, 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 do glory days. So that is a Bruce Springsteen, right? Glory days. Yeah, so Tavon Gray, exactly. I thought the same thing when I looked at this slide. I'm like, who? Who? Yeah, he now plays for Jamaica. Paxton Aronson, good pick. So he's only blown, he's only screwed one up so far, right? All right. Um, Caden um, Clark. <laughs> this is not going to work out. And it's nothing personal against Caden Clark. He just lost a bunch of years of development now because he never played for New York City uh, uh, and my Red Bulls didn't get to learn his trade at Leipzig because they were like, yeah, get out of here, dude. Get your ass out of here. Right? Um. Yeah, sad story. But Pete can't get them all right. I'm just showing you how hard it is to be right when you're doing player projections and this is just two years ago and some of these guys have already they're like they're done they're not going to be playing for they're not good enough for the olympic team they're not good to enough to play for their current mls team start be a starter they're not a prospect anymore although somebody says uh Loverdad says caden scored last game i think i don't know i I've heard so far from Minnesota people that he's just been I eight this season. But I don't see him being a contributor to the U.S. men's national team in any way. Or are you in the Olympic team going forward? And like Winkley Gonzalez, I feel bad for him. I do. All right. Reed Baker Whiting. Who? What'd you say? Who? All right, to be fair to Reed Baker writing, he's been injured. So, uh, but I don't think 
I mean, the news was all like, oh, Arsenal's interested. Man, United's interested. Um, Chelsea's interested. All the rumors. Well, whoop. As somebody says, David D says, swing and a miss. <laughs> now it's not all over. He's only 18, 19 years old right now. So there's still hope if he can get over this injury that he'll play for the Seattle Sounders. I don't think it's over. Yes, um, Winkley, he was linked to Manchester United. Yes. Um, I'm not saying it's over for him, but this one so far ain't panning out. Now he's young, so we'll give him time. But you don't hear anybody talking about Reed Baker Whiting. Not sure I'm a big fan of the name Reed. Hey, Reed. What you doing? Are you reading, Reed? <laughs> How big's your Reed, Reed? You want to smoke some weed, Reed? I'm in the lead, Reed. You're losing. I don't like the name Reed. Is that bad of me? All right. <clears throat> Could be. It's not very nice of me. I'm just having a good time, though. Sorry, that might offend some people who don't like me to have a good time, even in my past. All right, Kate Cowell. This is a good pick. I mean, I don't think that Kate Cowell... We can totally take him off the books yet, but I don't think he's going to Everton anytime soon. Like they all said he would. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> ah, all right. <coughs> yeah. Oh, this is a good one. You got to put this one up. Uh, Derek, it's not his fault. It's his parents' fault. Like what? His mom and dad were smoking with that name. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. It is his parents' fault. Um, just like Jizz's parents. Jizz's parents. Jizz's Jizz. What was his name? Hornblast? Jizz Hornblower? You don't name your son Jizz. When all of the English language J I S S. J-I-Z-Z, -Z, excuse me, is literally the stuff coming out of your penis after sex, after a hand job, after masturbation, after autofellatio, after a gangbang, after a bukkake. That's stuff coming out of your cock from the balls. You can't name your son Jizz, Hornblower, or Horn Camp. Sorry, Horn Camp. <sighs> Anyhow, all right, we're getting near the end here. Quinn Sullivan, still a good pick. Don't know if he's going to be like one of those guys to go to Europe yet. And by the way, we all forgot about Quinn now because Caven. Caven's the man. Caven's the man, right? Who cares about Quinn? <laughs> Let's all focus on Caven shoes, his Prada shoes. But you know what? It doesn't help him because he think I think he took a picture of a shirt, Prada shirt. Is it Prada? Is that the is that the thing Prada? I'm not a fashion guy. In fact, I would take Prada, I would put it in my under my an asshole and I'd shit all over it. I don't care about any of that materialistic horse shit. None of it. Don't care. And I wish he didn't either. I wish he just focused on soccer and not Prada. But at the same time, I'm not going to hold it against him. I guess that's the way kids are these days, right? We like their fashion designs. It's really important. They're really into their materialism, right? Oh, boy. Yes, there are four. Sullivan. I'll show that here. There are four Sullivans. There are. Aren't, aren't, isn't there a Sullivan sister, too? I think there was a Sullivan sister. Or is that a stepsister, I'll ever add? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Was it a stepsister? 
Maybe they're all related. I hope so. All right. Um, Caleb Wiley. Kind of stagnated there in Atlanta. Got to go. Got to leave soon. Time's running out. You're 19 now, Caleb. But I don't know where you're going to go now. I don't know where you're going to go because you're a hot prospect once and now you're kind of fading into <coughs> whoever used to be the right back in the old days for Atlanta a year ago, the ball head guy from Indiana that already thought that was um, Big Ten player of the year, college player of the year, right? Was it Celtic briefly? Who's that guy? Who's that guy? I can't even remember his name. And he played in Indiana. I can't remember his name right now. Caleb. Got to do something, brother. Moises Nyman. He got this one wrong, too. Moises Nyman went to Belgium. Play for a shitty team named Beveren. Never got to play. What happened to this kid? He barely plays now. Barely. Barely. And this was like a super highly touted, touted player. No, not Brooks Leneth and Jonathan Miller. That's who plays it right back now for Atlanta. This is the guy before him. Bald-headed dude from Indiana University. College player of the year. Not Vasilev. Plays right back. Vasilev doesn't play right back. Um, damn it. Can't remember his name, guys. No Atlanta fans in here. Don't remember the ball. Goodman. 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 Highly touted. Even out of Indiana University. Coming into the draft, which is about as useless as a uh, flaccid cock in a whorehouse. Right? Why do we even have that anymore? Just let them recruit the players individually. Don't need a goddamn draft. This isn't the NFL. Get over your nuts and set your nuts and balls, Don Garber. Open it up. All right, let's see what else Pete got. Obed Vargas. Well, he's not even the number one prospect in Seattle anymore. Not even close. If you're a Seattle fan and you disagree, let me know. But when we talk about Seattle, we don't talk about Ovid Vargas anymore. Not as a projected superstar, that's for sure. Jack McGlynn. I think Jack McGlynn's still in the conversation. I don't know if he's going to be anything but a really solid MLS player his whole career. And there's nothing wrong with that. I just think a lot of people had higher hopes, especially with that rocket of a leg that he's got. And it is a rocket, but he's 20 now. And um, uh, yeah, I'm not sure much is going to happen there. Goodman was really good in college. I know. He was at Indiana University when I still lived in Bloomington. He was well thought of. Um. The girls liked him, and uh, he was a good player. He's a standard MLS professional player. That's it. Nothing more than that. Nothing wrong with that, though. Making money, right? But when he leaves MLS, he's going to have to get a real job. He's probably not going to be able to retire. Right? Atencio has been outplaying Vargas, in my opinion, so far this year anyway, says Fleshpot. That sounds sexual. He's had some knocks as well. Yeah. It all adds up, right? It all adds up. Let's see who else we got here. What? Who else did Pete pick? George Campbell. <laughs> Yeah, this is another bad pick, man. 
But that's why he doesn't do projection shows anymore. And this is why I don't do projection shows. Because when you go back, you're going to get half of them wrong. I think Pete did a little better than half here, right? But um, as far as, like, none of them have become really great players yet or anything. It's only been two years. But George Campbell is like a total nothing burger of a player. He plays for Montreal. All right. When I say play, I mean he's on the roster there. And yet this was some sort of highly touted player. Now, Pete had a bunch of people that he thanked for helping him create this list. I don't know if I have the thank list, right? I should have put that on there. There are people that you know on X, people that people think highly of as U.S. men's national team youth prospect um, experts. Remember when the guy last show said, why don't you bring on some experts of youth players and see what they say about the youth players? Well, how young do you want me to go? Number one, that would be my first question. And if you told me U15s, I'd say, nah, I ain't doing it, number one, because it's absolutely useless information. Number two, there is no such thing as anybody that knows about every NU15 player in the United States because it's too goddamn big for them to cover. So there's no such thing as an expert of that, right? Wouldn't do it. It's no point. If you're talking about uh, youth players or youngsters, U18s in Europe, I could, I think I'm, if you want to call someone an expert, I know my U18s uh, in Europe. Bundesliga especially, young players. Um, but I don't consider myself an expert because I don't know how many of that shit's going to work out either. I've only now begun to trust my instincts on Max Dietz. Okay? Here were the special mentions, by the way. Paxton Pomacall. Ted de Q. Di Pietro. Jacob Green. Jacob Green? Who the fuck is that? Daniel... Levia from um, Seattle Sounders. Leva. Daniel Leva. I almost sounded like I said Lavia. Uh, Edwin Cirillo, Josh Atencio, Noah Allen, Caden Pierre, Michael Halliday, Hayden Sergis. Is that uh, Sergeant's brother got demoted? Daniel Edelman. All right. There you go. This is not easy to do. Right? Not easy to do. All right. So we're almost done with the show. BMR says, so you're keeping an eye on boys under the age of 18, Derek. Um, not really, because their games aren't something you can watch. You can only really track their stats, playing time, goals, assists, and all that. So, yeah. Can't really keep an eye on them. Not sure I would. I got enough games to watch anyhow, but I get the joke. <laughs> I'm am I ogling the youngsters. All right. Um, that's probably going to do it for today's show, folks. Speaking of youngsters, um, it was a lot of fun and it went on a lot longer than I thought it would. Honestly, a lot longer than I thought it would. I want to thank everybody who was here, showed up, stayed here. Um, and doing these shows is a lot more difficult than they thought they were going to be. <laughs> but it was fun to do them. And, um, you know, I appreciate all of you being here and supporting me while Brett is gone. And I did not know I could do this. My voice is kind of scratchy. I'll be honest with you. I needed to drink more during the show, honestly, because it's scratchy. Um, but uh, we will be back Monday. It'll be both of us. Hopefully we've got a lot of good stuff to cover, right? Because we got a whole weekend of games coming up. Um, I've got excitingly for me. I get to watch some um, F1 this weekend too. I'm a big fan of F1. Anyhow, uh, listen, if you got the foreskin, I'm happy for you. Thumbs up to you. I understand there are the benefits. And uh, I want to just make sure you know that I'm totally cool. Anyhow, you don't get a choice 
in the matter. Because somebody said you can implant that back on, you can't do that. I mean, I have looked that up, but I'm pretty sure that's ridiculous. I mean, you could, but I've never heard of any such thing where people like, you know, get their foreskin put back on again. Either way, I hope your stepsister enjoys it because that's what's really important. We'll see you next time on the Straight Red Card. Mwah, love you. I mean, it's going to end the show at some point, right? <laughs> I love it. Here we go. Here we go. <laughs> that hurt. <laughs> <laughs> then what is this thing? Gio should never play for U.S. men's national team again because of the action of his parents. Because what an idiot. Oh, what type of Muppet does this? Muppets. Absolute Muppets. I, I'm not going to be the best person to give a whole explanation here, but that's... Booty, booty, shake, shake. Booty, booty. I can deal with it. What are we really doing? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I can agree with that. There are a zebra in between a tarantula and an elephant. Has been nothing more than a sham. So yeah, we didn't play well, but you know what? At the end of the day... We got the job done. It's going to be a good time for sure. Oh, sex with the first cousin would indeed be incest. And